our prayers come before you, O God, at the entrance, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we might sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Amen. So welcome back to our Advent worships. This is the fourth week now, and the word for this fourth week is peace. And I'd like to talk about it in this way. So let's see. There was World War I, World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, the war against Iraq, the war in Afghanistan, current wars in Africa, and now the Russian war against Ukraine. And that's not even a complete list, it's just a quick list of where the world is warring. That biblical promise of a time of peace, a time when war will be no more, doesn't that seem like it's almost a far-fetched and distant dream? Turning weapons of war into instruments of peace, swords into plowshares, that doesn't seem to be on any nation, maybe anybody's short list of things to do. I suspect that for most of us, peace has come to mean simply the time when there aren't any wars, or certainly aren't many wars. Most of us might be willing to settle for that. We know that beggars can't be choosers in this broken world. But in Hebrew, peace, shalom, means fullness. It means having everything you need to be whole and happy. It's the kind of peace God intends. Now, to find that shalom, it means sharing what you have that brings you peace, sharing it with others so that they too can have that same peace and wholeness and happiness. Peace, that kind of peace, is at the heart of God's promise and gift in Jesus Christ. You know, at the birth of Jesus, one of the titles attributed to Jesus was Prince of Peace. You may know this, it was a term stolen away from Roman authorities and their claim that Caesar alone was the Son of God and the Prince of Peace. That claim, Jesus as Prince of Peace, would prove to be a radical claim for Roman leadership and it set them against Jesus throughout his ministry. His disciples would go on to claim Jesus is Lord, not Caesar. Jesus is King, not Caesar. And those would be fighting words. But it's as the Prince of Peace that Jesus' ministry seems to focus and embrace. When you read the Jesus stories, you'll discover that Jesus talked about that peace in two distinct and contradictory ways. On one occasion, he said to his disciples, Now, do not think that I have come to bring peace on earth. I have come to bring not peace, but a sword. And then a bit later, the last time that he was with his disciples at a meal, Jesus said to them, Now, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. So here's how we, I think, how we handle that contradiction. When Jesus refers to the sword, I believe he's not embracing war and division and battle as godly work or the disciples' work. But I think he's using sword as a metaphor for the division in community and the division in family that his good news gospel of peace could bring about. Then and now, Jesus' way is not the world's way. Some will continue to seek power and peace through division, through battle. But I think what Jesus is driving at is that his followers will embrace nonviolence a laying down of warfare, a, a giving up on seeking the world's way of power. It seems to me that this contradiction in what Jesus says seems resolved when we see that for Jesus, peace doesn't mean the absence of struggle. Peace means the presence of self-giving, life-giving love shared for all others. That the peace Jesus bestows on those who seek to follow him brings shalom, brings a deeper, more lasting sense of wholeness in themselves and in their community. 
You know, the peace that we seek in our daily life comes in many forms. From the call for, oh, please, Lord, just a little peace and quiet, to the desire for peace of mind or peace of heart, or peace between broken families and friends, all the way to peace between enemies, peace in all the world, especially that peace that passes all understanding. At the root of peace, the gift and dream of peace, is the Prince of Peace, who lays down his life to bring shalom even between God and creation and God and all people. This we believe, that by grace through faith in Christ, shalom, peace, is a dream come true and coming true. Peace is a promise found even in the midst of our struggle, because the people of God are doing this, sharing what you have that brings you peace, sharing it with others so that they can have the same peace, the same wholeness, and the same happiness. Such peace is what Jesus offers, what Jesus brings to one and all, to everyone. Shalom. Amen.
Power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. 